Hello everyone. Welcome to the part 3 of the training document understanding ML models uh, video series. So, in the previous video, we discussed how to generate the training data through the document understanding workflow and upload it to data manager manually and then perform the ML training. But this process that I showed you in the previous video was something that you have to do manually. And uh, when you are dealing with large amounts of documents, it's not possible to sit down and go through each and every document uh, and do the verification and perform the, uh, the machine learning training. So to address that, in this video, we'll see what are the features that's available in the latest version of your path platform and see how we can do that. So let's get to the workflow and the AI center. Okay, so in AI center, if you remember from the previous session, we had uh, the data labeling session done for us so let me open this and also uh, in in the data manager what we did is we just uh, imported several documents uh, based on the validations done through the UiPath workflow and that's what we exported and then trained the model so in here now what we are talking about is how we can do the same steps automatically without someone manually logging into the data manager and doing the import and export. So for this one we'll be using the data manager and also we'll be using the data sets. So again referring back to the previous video we discussed in the UiPath document understanding workflow down here we introduced the train extractor scope activity along with machine learning extractor train activity and we showed how the training data is generated and how it is uploaded to the uh, data set in the AI center and also we discussed how and where we can store this same training data locally. So just to brief uh, you on that, so let's quickly look at the local version. So in this one, we'll see the documents where we have all the process documents and the metadata in, in JSON format. So this will basically have all the validated information and the locations of the fields and every single thing that you can find in the document. These files are generated from this activity. Also, if you look at this data set in the AI center, you will see the same set of folders and the same files because it's automatically uploading the data into AI center. So if we get to the data sets, uh, invoice training is our data set. So you can see uh, this export is the folder that was created once we exported the data last time and the internal one was uh, some internal files that's used by data manager. So what happens here is when you import documents into data manager and do the validation here and then export it. Uh, it creates that export file, but as and when the process runs, through this activity, when you upload the documents into the AI center data set, it will create this fine-tuned folder inside the specified data set. So basically, all the new files that you process will be stored inside this fine-tuned folder. So in this folder, you can see the same structure, documents folder and the metadata. And here you will see all the JSON files 
and in the documents folder you will see all the documents that you process so the reason to have this data here is actually to help us automate the training part of the machine learning models as you know once we create these machine learning models uh, we also need to maintain so this training is one of those maintaining actions so you might wonder are we training um, only on the data available in this fine tune folder well not really every time you run the process it will just keep on populating the data into this fine tune folder irrespective of when you are running it uh, uh, how many documents you are running down so basically every time the retraining process happens from now on it will be processing every single file that you see in the fine tune folder and also the initial training that you did so everything will be considered every time when you do the retraining it will be a larger data set than what you trained before so basically it will be also using the old uh, files that were used to train the previous versions as well to train the newer version so that's how you improve the accuracy of the machine learning model all right so that being said now we know that whatever the documents that we have in this fine tune folder will be used to train the data so now let's have a look how we can get this data the documents into the data manager so in the data manager this is what we uh, discussed last time these 10 documents but how to import the data automatically into data manager if you actually look at this import you don't see a auto import or a scheduling option to actually import the data basically the option here is just to uh, browse and upload the document basically if you remember last time what we did was we zipped this folder and then uploaded that but that was manual but when it comes to auto retraining we are not using the local file the training data that's created will be using the data available in the data set so to import data from a data set this is not the screen that we use so if you actually go to export in here there's a very interesting the schedule so you can see this is trivial in preview but this is a very good feature that we can use to automate the import of the documents into data manager and automatically export it into the data set so let's enable this so you can see once it is enabled it says you can configure the schedule at what time do you want to run the schedule and usually how do you want to recur the schedule basically every two days or every seven days and so on so the recommended approach is not to do the training every day so training a, a, a machine learning model on a small number of data like seven or ten documents is easy and it's fast but as i explained earlier as the process keep on running <clears throat> it generates more and more data for the model to get trained upon so at some point it will be having so much of data and uh, the retraining process will take quite a lot of time to complete <laughs> and probably it will take sometimes days two or three days to complete one iteration so it is always recommended to run maybe on a weekly basis or even on a monthly basis 
depending on the requirement and how how you want to train the models so basically in our scenario here let's quickly schedule it so i can set the time let's say now it's 11 46 my time you can see over here uh, let's change it to maybe uh, 11.50 2 minutes from now and for now I will say recover every 7 days and you can also see the next scheduled export will happen today in about another 2 minutes as you see the time so let's click on schedule so once you schedule this you can see it is already enabled what will happen is when the schedule runs <coughs> it will look into the data that's available in the fine-tune folder it will automatically import that data into our data manager and automatically export it to this export folder so let's have a look at the export This is the structure of the export folder. You can see a text file that says latest. And also this is the previous export that we did for our previous demo. So what will happen is when it creates this automatic import and export, it will basically create a new folder here. <coughs> Probably with the same name, but the date time stamp will be different it will up, update this folder with a new folder with a with the new date and it will also update this latest text file with the latest file information or the latest directory that it needs to look into to find the latest export okay so you can see i just refresh and our schedule just ran just a while ago because scheduled it for the next minute say this now we have a folder called auto export and this is the timestamp let's have a look so inside this we have the schema json the split file the images of the documents and also what are the latest documents that you can find so this is the data that we need to train the uh, the ml model so you can see it's automatically updating itself and if we quickly have a look at this latest text if i click on download here you can see it has the same folder name auto export and the date so basically the the training process will actually look into this latest text file to find what is the latest exported data set. So make sure that you don't ever delete this text file. Because if you delete it, the process will not be able to run. Alright. So that's how you automatically import and export. So in data manager you no longer need to uh, sit down and go through the uh, verification just like we did last time uh, with the data so basically you can also see the count here it was 10 earlier it got updated with some latest document the reason is because it automatically imported the data uh, through the schedule. So maybe you can also check the logs. Have a look. Uh, this is the fine tune run that happened just a while ago. So you can see what actually happened. In my case, I did not have any new files uh, except one. The remaining were actually duplicates. So you can see 
So the log says these are duplicate files and there's one fine-tuned document that you just able to identify. And the processing was complete. So when this happens automatically, only thing that you need to make sure is that you have the proper accurate data to train. So it's always good to keep an overlook or overlook this process to ensure that you don't train the model with bad data or you do the proper verification uh, so that you have the correct information to train the model. That verification and how we are going to do that, that may depend on the, uh, the company and the process itself. It's an important thing to keep a note of, though it is automated. Okay, so now we know how it automatically works here in the data manager. And this schedule will keep on running based on how we configured it. The next thing is, now we are able to create the training data flow. So how to create the pipeline and how to uh, run it without manually triggering it. Let's have a look. So now we are into the pipelines and let's quickly create a new pipe. Let's have a look. Our package name is EKG invoices and we'll create a new pipeline. I'm going to say that this is a training pipeline and I'll be using my uh, package and I will be using the version that I'm using right now. Okay, so this is where you choose the data set and this is the important step. So now you know that in the in the export folder that there will be multiple folders created. So how to find that uh, folders? So if you have a look, uh, okay, let me get back here. So once you click on this, it will show all the data sets that's available. So in our case, invoice training is the data set. And if we need to, if we want to go inside, you can click on this, uh, the, on the name, and then you can see the export folder and the internal So, uh, what we are interested in is on the export folder and inside that you can have any number of uh, folders but it will look into that latest file and figure out what's the latest export. But still it will use all the information available here to train our pipeline or the model. So this is the folder that you need to indicate because that folder has all the information. So let's click on select. So you can see under invoice training data set, you are selecting the export folder for the training. And this is where you enable the auto retraining. See the parameters. If you can set this auto retraining to true, that will automatically uh, do the retraining. So you can see, enable this option when the pipeline you are creating is scheduled automatic pipeline synchronized with automatic exports from data manager. So we have done the first step. We have done the auto export. So now what we are doing is the second step. Auto, auto training of the using the pipeline. Okay. So what we can do is you can click on edit, select this to true. Click on save. And then you can also uh, make sure that this pipeline runs based on a schedule. Otherwise, it will just run this particular pipeline and do the auto retrain, but it will not run it again unless someone manually creates the pipeline. So, what this setting that we did here will ensure. When the pipeline 
runs, it will also automatically train the model and upgrade it to the latest version. So for us to ensure the pipeline runs based on our specific uh, schedule, we need to go into this option. So earlier we ran with run now. Now let's see what options we have here. If you click on time based, you get two options. At what time do you want to run this? But this is more like a schedule uh, to, to do only a single run. So if I say run on August 12th at 12 o'clock midnight, it will run the, run the pipeline at that time. Once that is complete, it will stop. But in my case, I want to run this <clears throat> on a weekly basis. So in that case, I need to click on recurrent. So once you click here, the first run, here we get another option, that recurring schedule. How do you want to run it? Okay, so we have two options, days and advanced. In advanced, you can run, a, you can provide a cron expression to decide on which schedule that you need to run this. These cron expressions are used in Orchestrator as well. In, in scheduling. So in here it's the same format. So you can uh, build your current expression and provide it here. And under the days, here you can say on which date you are planning to run the first first process or the first uh, execution, the training run. So let's say I will run this at uh, 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. starting uh, 13th. So I will say starting on this day at 1 a.m. do the first run. And from that onwards, I need to run this training pipeline every seven days. So you can see the first run will happen today. 1 a.m. The next scheduled run is seven days from now. And at, at 1 a.m. So basically, once you click on done, it will make sure that the process will uh, trigger at the specified time. And let's click on. Yeah. So you can see the new pipeline is scheduled. Uh, so no other additional options and it will start running at the specified time and you can see the logs run all right so that's the second step and now i'm going to show you the third step and this is not mandatory this is an optional step because we have already figured the schedule the pipeline to do that so if you go into ml skills here we have the ML model that we have been using. Um, so let's click on this. And inside this ML model, you can actually modify the deploy. So let's click on this. This is the interesting feature. So you can see a couple of options over here. You can enable GPU if you have it so that the process the training and the upgrading process will be faster along with the prediction and uh, make ML scale public. If you do this, you can actually get an endpoint created for this ML model which you can use anywhere that you like. Uh, just like what we have with the other endpoints in other models. And this is the new feature, enable auto update. So just like before, we enabled the import and export in data manager. And we created the pipeline with, with the schedule so that it will run automatically. And in the same schedule, enabled auto retraining to true. So it's, the, it's basically the same setting. 
So you can also do the do the same thing here as well. Enable auto update and click on confirm. So basically it will update itself and whenever the new version is available it will automatically update to the latest version. So these are the easy steps that uh, we can do to enable auto retraining of the models uh, so that you don't need to manually create schedules and the document verification data center or data manager okay so that's pretty much it on uh, auto retraining hope this is video and it's easy uh, so in the next video we'll also see a couple of other features uh, in in this import there were a few features like how to make this uh, test set and what is actually a test set but we'll, if you do an import in a test set so these things we'll discuss the next part of the video thank you very much for listening and i hope this uh, is pretty much helpful for you guys and also just one additional thing for additional reading on auto retraining you can always refer to this link that explains most of the things that i already explained i will share the link in the video description okay thank you very much for listening and uh, stay safe i'll see you in another video